Welcome to CT Small Business Toolkit, where small business innovators and influencers share the advice that will help you turn your idea into a business and your business into a success. Let's get started. JB, it's good to have you with us. Hey, thank you, Greg. Let's start with how your family got into this business and, and how you eventually uh, took over the company. Well, real quick, um, I'm fourth generation. Uh, my daughter, who's in her third year of college, she's in, uh, she will be fifth generation, possibly. Uh, she's been spending the last two summers here in between uh, school. Back in uh, 1939, my great-grandfather, Ellis Brown, started, and uh, with a couple other gentlemen, started melding iron, and uh, they worked at a foundry uh, in South Bend, about 10 miles up the road, and they thought it was pretty simple to do back then. So uh, brick and mortar, they uh, built their own little foundry, and it's grown over the years. My grandfather and my father, my father's CEO, and uh, I'm fourth generation, and it's, it's been a lovely family history. And we've had, uh, being in a small community, we've had other family members here. We've got other fourth generation members, w whether in management or out on the shop floor from uh, other families as well. Well, it's fantastic. Legacy, was this something that was kind of assumed generation to generation, or it just kind of happened that way? No, you know, it just kind of happened that way. We, uh, I was never pushed to come back. Um, it was something I wanted to do as a, a, my passion for the foundry or manufacturing industry has always been wonderful, and it's something that I love to do, and we, we're very family-oriented. So I was given a choice. You know, I mean, I could go out and do my own thing or come back, and I really wanted to come back. I wanted to be part of it. And actually, I was influenced to go out a little bit and get some other influences, but I really uh, I wanted to be here, and uh, it's, it's, I'm very passionate about it, and I can see that in my daughter's eyes as well. And I'm really trying to push her to uh, maybe uh, go work some other places, but uh, it, it's, it's hard when you have a passion for it. Absolutely. As you were growing up and you watched your dad, or perhaps your granddad was still working uh, at that time at the foundry, uh, did it uh, kind of present itself as, as a major topic, a constant theme throughout family life? Oh, definitely. You know, I, you know, we we work seven days a week, twenty four hours a day, and we, you know, being a family business, and and you know, it never leaves. Whether it's Christmas, Thanksgiving, and you know, as being a child, you know, I'd come down here during the day, I'd sit at my dad's desk or my grandfather's desk, or you know, go out on the shop floor with them, and they'd take me around and show me everything, and playing sand piles, and you know, mark notches in the in the doorway of how you're growing. So it's always a, it was always being around this situation, and then. You know, dinner table conversations, you're always talking about work, whether it's directly about somebody or a topic or a conversation or something in the community. It always seems to revolve around it. And, you know, it's nice to take a break and spend time with family, but this is our life and this is our family's life. So it's just the way we live. We are talking with James Brown, known as JB. He's the head of Bremen Castings. He's the fourth generation leader of that company. His daughter might be the fifth generation in time. We'll, we'll still have to see if that's the case. Uh, but uh, in addition to continuing to run this family business, you've taken the time to kind of go over some of the key principles when keeping a family business going. And the first one, uh, not surprisingly, I'm guessing to most people, is honor thy father and not just honoring the legacy that you've inherited, but making sure that there's good, strong leadership at the top. Uh, how much of a, is an imperative on the older generation to make sure that the one taking over is is up to speed and, and, and ready for the job? And how much of it is the younger generation making sure that they're ready to go and, and doing everything possible to make sure that what previous generations have built doesn't get squandered? It's always a tough call, I'm sure. Someday I'll be put in that boat when, uh, when my father asked me if I wanted to be president. We, we, we're traditionally raised in operations. Um, I don't have a law degree. I'm not an accountant. But, you know, we, we're all raised in operations. And we feel in our company one of the reasons for survival is that you have to be operations-oriented and you have to know what's going on. So that way you can help make, make wise decisions on those investments and uh, – you know, the, the future and, and the strategic planning of that. And being, you know, honor thy father also goes into, you know, running your company as a family business. But being strong as a leader in this company means that you know what's going on. You have your hand on everything that's going on. And I don't mean micromanaging, but you, you have a good team around you that feeds you information daily and that you know your employees, you know what's going on. You, you just know everything that's happening 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that you're just not a, a, an investor. Next on the list is cash is king, and the, the premise there is that family members, especially in a family-owned and run business, often are the major shareholders if such things exist in the business, and therefore that means cash flow is, is critical. How do you maintain that so effectively? And that's obviously a good policy for any small business, not just one that runs in the family. 
Yeah, I think it's great. I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, that we've all seen in the past where, you know, as a family business, you can you can take money out of the company as you wish sometimes and pay yourself what you want. We don't run things like that. We, we believe in reinvesting 10% of our profits every year back into our company. We're a heavily capital intense industry being a foundry and machine shop. We have a lot of equipment and we try to keep our debt low and we, we, we pay ourselves according to what we think the market bears and we make sure that we reinvest in both human capital and back in uh, machine capital every year. One of the things that is stressed greatly at Toolkit.com is finding a good entity plan. In other words, being able to make sure that your personal assets are not affected if something were to happen negatively to the business. And that kind of leads into the number three point here, and that's instill an estate plan, making sure that the finances in one area don't get uh, mingled too much with the other, correct? Uh, You can't start soon enough on this. Uh, that you know, one thing that uh, as we surround ourselves with positive people or, or heavily influenced, you just can't get enough input from whether it's your accountants, your attorneys, or other individuals in this situation. Um, you always have to be talking. You always have to revisit this every quarter. Um, it's it's imperative that you have that estate plan because anything can happen at any time and day. And whether who's you know whether you have a trust or whatever whatever situation you might be in. This has got to be taken care of. I can't imagine trying to run a company, and let's say that my father would pass away unexpectedly, and he's still the CEO, and trying to run this company and trying to deal with an unorganized death, it would be be horrible. Number four, and the last one we'll talk about on this list is enlist outside expertise. You mentioned before that uh, you have a certain set of skills that you have identified very clearly. You're not an accountant. You're not a lawyer. And so you focus on the things that you do best and are best at helping the business achieve. How do you know where to go and, and how often to go outside for additional help? Well, first of all, uh, having an advisory board to myself, that is one thing that's key and not picking people that I necessarily would be friends with and having dinner every night, but people that have uh, an influence that I can get together on a quarterly basis and that I can bounce things off of or email or talk, but we can meet on a quarterly. And also our board of directors. Our board of directors is not made up of just family members. Our board of directors is made up of outside influences from other industries and other individuals. And uh, the other thing is is audited financials. You know, I think it's, you know, I know some other uh, family companies that, you know, don't have audited financials. One thing is my job is to keep the stakeholders and the shareholders happy and know that everything is on the up and up. So we run really tight books here. We get audited financials every year. We have outside board of directors looking down upon the job that I'm doing with my metrics and me having an advisory board is the best thing I ever did. Just a minute or so left here with James Brown. He's the president of Bremen Castings in Bremen, Indiana. And uh, you mentioned a little bit earlier in our conversation, JB, that uh, this is a business when it's a family business that is it's ne- you're never really off the clock. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What are the things you need to have in mind in terms of family dynamics when obviously the business is going to consume a lot of time and a lot of attention? Have an understanding wife. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know, uh, it's it's un, it's well understood. Uh, you know, we do we play hard, we work hard, um, but it never leaves. Whether we're playing and you know doing some other outside activity, it just it's it's expected that you know that there's going to be interruptions and there's going to be things that happen. Uh, that's part of being a family-owned business, and sometimes it's not always pleasant. Sometimes. You know, I mean, it's no secret that I disagree with my father sometimes. I'm not ashamed of that. I hope we do disagree. But at the end of the day, we walk out of the office and we have the same agenda and we have the same story. So, uh, you know, just the whole family just has to understand that this is what happens. And we do talk about it. Where can folks learn more about your business? www.bremencastings.com. Excellent. Or check us out on Facebook as well. Facebook at Bremen Castings. It's also on Twitter at Bremen Castings. JB, fascinating uh, insight into the family-run business. Congratulations on so many generations of success and best wishes that it keeps going. Hey, thank you, Greg. Thanks for joining us on CT Small Business Toolkit. Be sure to visit our website, ct.walterskluwer.com, and follow at CT Corporation on Twitter. We'll see you next time on CT Small Business Toolkit.